Beneath the frozen surface of Uranus's moon, Ariel, something massive may be hiding – an ocean more than 100 miles deep. That's 40 times deeper than the Pacific Ocean. And it's been sealed up under ice for billions of years, waiting to be discovered. So Uranus is this pale blue gas giant way out there, the loner planet that never gets much attention. But recently, scientists turned their telescopes and computer models toward one of Uranus's 29 known moons, Ariel. Compared to its sisters and brothers, Ariel's got quite a unique personality. When the Voyager 2 spacecraft flew by in 1986, it caught some photos showing an oddly smooth surface peppered with craters, fractures, and valleys. Those details might not sound exciting until you realize what they mean. This moon was geologically active, moving, cracking, and reshaping itself like Earth does. That's rare in the outer solar system, where most moons are just frozen popsicles, quietly spinning around their planet. When scientists studied those fractures, technically called grabbins, they found something strange. The pattern of these cracks looks exactly like what happens when there's pressure building underneath the surface, like a balloon stretching before it pops. It's as if something deep inside Ariel was pushing outward, warping, and breaking the crust. The most logical culprit would be a subsurface ocean, which was once warm enough to push against the icy layers above it. An ocean sealed under miles of ice, hidden for billions of years. So, how would something so far from the Sun even have liquid water? Well, Ariel's orbit isn't perfectly circular, but slightly oval, which scientists call eccentric. That means as it circles Uranus, the gravitational pull changes a little each time. The constant tugging stretches and flexes the Moon's interior, creates friction, and voila, generates heat. Combine that with natural radioactive decay inside the rocky core, and suddenly you've got enough warmth to melt ice deep below the surface. So Ariel might have been making its own geothermal spa out there in the middle of nowhere. Scientists modeled its interior structure and found that the stress the tidal forces were causing could have kept liquid water stable for millions, maybe even billions of years. Even cooler, or warmer in this case, is that traces of that ocean may still exist. Ariel's icy shell shows features that look recent, geologically speaking. That means the moon hasn't been completely frozen for all eternity. Beneath those fractures, there could still be small pockets or thin layers of liquid water. And this brings up the most exciting part. Water means potential life. Every time scientists find signs of liquid water somewhere in the solar system, they start whispering that question we all secretly love. Could something live there? Sure, Ariel's no tropical resort, but remember, on Earth, we've found microbes thriving near hydrothermal vents at the bottom of our oceans, living off chemicals, not sunlight. If Ariel once had similar vents pumping heat and minerals into its ocean, it could have easily hosted its own microscopic residence. And if there was an ocean there once, it could still have salt in its interior. Scientists believe salts and ammonia could act like antifreeze, keeping the water liquid longer. So even though the surface temperatures drop to minus 351 degrees Fahrenheit, the inside could stay cozy enough for water to remain unfrozen. Now, before you start packing for Uranus, let's remember this is a moon orbiting a gas giant that's about 1.8 billion miles away from us. Visiting it isn't as simple as booking a plane ticket. Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft that's ever gotten even close, and that was almost 40 years ago. We have better photos of Mars's sand dunes than we do of most Uranian moons. So for now, scientists rely on clever modeling, telescope data, and a lot of patience. Still, this discovery is big. For decades, we've looked at moons like Jupiter's Europa or Saturn's Enceladus as the best representatives of the ocean world category. They're icy, they have subsurface oceans, and scientists have actually detected water plumes jetting into space from them. But now Ariel joins the club. 
If we ever send another mission to Uranus, Ariel would be a prime target for exploration. Now, another destination worth checking out is Saturn's moon Mimas. Scientists have always thought it was just a frozen rock ball, but it might be hiding a whole ocean underneath its surface, and a future spacecraft could find it. Researchers have been mapping how thick the moon's icy crust is, and those maps help them figure out how old this ocean could be and where the ice is thinnest. That's the jackpot spot for future missions to check for liquid water. Mimas doesn't look like a typical ocean world. When you look at Europa or Enceladus, you can literally see the cracks and crevices in their icy shells. Mimas looks smooth and quiet, almost like a cue ball in space. The craters look permanent, carved in rock rather than ice. Nothing about it screams ocean world. But a few years ago, data from NASA's Cassini spacecraft started telling us otherwise. Cassini, the probe that gave us our best tour of Saturn and its moons, kept sending back info that didn't quite make sense unless Mimas had liquid water under all that ice. The more Cassini's data rolled in, the more it looked like there might be a newborn ocean hiding under 12 to 19 miles of solid ice. Scientists used models, originally made for Europa, to figure out how heat moves through Mimas's icy shell. They wanted to know how thick it was, how much heat it could trap, and whether it could melt ice below. And they found that once melting starts on Mimas, it doesn't stop. It accelerates, and really quickly. All that melting ties back to Mimas' orbit. The Moon doesn't orbit Saturn in a perfect circle, its path gets a little stretched. That oval shape means the Moon gets pulled and squeezed by Saturn's gravity as it orbits. The same way the Moon's gravity gives us tides here on Earth, Saturn's gravity tugs on Mimas. But instead of water tides, it's flexing solid ice. And that flexing creates heat. So, at some point, something kicked Mimas into a slightly weirder orbit, maybe a collision or a gravitational nudge from another moon. The inside of Mimas heated up, melted some of its ice, and created an ocean under the surface. But then, gravity slowly started to pull Mimas's orbit back into a circle again. When it does that, the heating will stop, and eventually, the ocean will freeze all over again. So basically, Mimas is in its warm, ocean-having phase right now. Computer models show that the orbital change probably happened just 10 to 15 million years ago. That's nothing in space-time. It also turned out that the heat on Mimas doesn't move in a simple straight line. It kind of loops and twists, depending on how thick the ice is. Which means finding this ocean won't be easy. But it's not impossible. Studying possible ocean worlds, and the ones of which we already know for sure, like Europa, Enceladus, Titan, and Callisto, is crucially important for us down here on Earth. Every time humans find liquid water somewhere new, we're basically discovering another version of the one thing that made us possible. Earth's oceans gave birth to everything alive, including us humans. When scientists learn how Europa's or Enceladus's oceans stay liquid without sunlight, they learn something about Earth's deep sea vents, about heat and balance. When they model Titan's chemistry, they're basically looking at what Earth might have been like before life began. So maybe life isn't that rare, and one day, a probe will dip into the icy ocean of Europa with NASA's Europa Clipper or scoop up water from Enceladus's geysers and find something, even a single living cell. And when that happens, it'll rewrite everything we think we know about life. It'll also remind us we're not the center of the story, but just one chapter in a universe full of water. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.